We're like wrestlers. We we get all baby oiled up before the show. <laughs> Welcome to Zero Hit Points, everybody. It's May the 17th. I'm Ryan Miller. He's the man, the myth, John Legend. No? John is too easy. I don't think I've ever... Matt Amberg. He's Matt Amberg. I don't think I've ever listened to John Legend. I have. He was in La La Land. Oh. Wait, what if it wasn't? And I, I hope just it, mistook I- another man for... John Legend? Yeah. You know what? I don't know, but happy birthday, wife. Today is your birthday. I love you. Thank you. Wait. No, actual yeah. wife. Uh, not this. Oh, man. yay. Cool. Good, Good Beth, job, Beth. Beth's birthday. She survived. Man, 53. I don't know how old she is. And, and I probably shouldn't make up. Yeah, sorry. That's a joke that works on everybody that... Okay, I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> She's not quite 53 yet. 79, man. That's better. It's been a good, good life. It's, <laughs> it's probably... <laughs> all right. Well, Good. Hey, what were we talking about? Oh, John Legend. That's right. The John yeah. Legends let's, let's of tomorrow. Let's do a podcast without John Legend for it, once. It's hard. You know, we want to talk about John Legend. He's got a great name. Or we save it for the John Legend cast. Actually, you know what? This is all this is this is semi-related. I want to put this out <laughs> at the top of the show because we've put this out on Twitter and Facebook, but not everybody to a Facebooks. No. So that's true. And especially since it's a podcast related question. I want to give it to anybody that's hearing this because you are the important one. <laughs> but we, we're we we're toying with an idea. Tell us what you think. Literally, uh, Facebook, um, Twitter. Uh, there's email an us. email podcast at zerohitpoints.com. Ryan at zerohitpoints.com. Matt at zerohitpoints.com. If you want to tell either one of us without the other knowing, I understand. Yeah, It's like a parental thing. Which one are you going to go to? Because dad's always a pushover. Yeah, one of us is going to get angry at you. The other one is... <laughs> what are we doing? I don't know. I don't even know which one I'm talking about, and I'm one of them. We are thinking about splitting up the podcast into two casts. I don't know what days, but they will both be weekly. One having to do with movies and one having to do with video games. We've had them together all this time because they're both important to us, and we like talking about them either way. Uh, So we don't want to drop either one, obviously. And we've kind of been primarily about video games. I think the movies was kind of a happy accident or it was just bound to happen anyways. It was. Yeah, it was. There was no denying that was going to occur. But we want to give people the option out there because I don't know how many people out there just kind of skip the first part or skip the last part or don't skip the whole thing. You download it and then you're like, you hear that you hear the theme song. You're like, that was a good theme song. I want to hear the end of it. And then you go to the end. Not a a solution we're going to push today. Yeah, next week, though. At some point, maybe we'll release something for those people who skip the podcast altogether. I don't know. So if that solution sounds cool to you, uh, give us your opinion. Tell us what you think. You're the one we want to know from. Yeah, and, and here, let, let's uh, let, let's just, just to, to kind of to kind of kick that off, keep it in mind, we're going to talk uh, about movies now. So, yeah. so here, here, here we go. Um, so if uh, you're one of the ones that skips the movie part... Don't, Still don't, out a lot. Don't, don't <laughs> skip. Don't skip it this time because you're going to want to hear this discussion. I think it's going to oh. be. I think it's going to be a good one. Um, I watched. I'm su- excited. I watched yeah. Suicide Squad. Oh, that's the okay. end of that discussion. Yeah, no, this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> that was the yeah. point. What a perfect movie to lead with. After, do you want us to stop talking about movies? Yeah. Or I don't. I don't know that I want to watch movies ever again yeah. after that. that. Do you was... want a movie podcast? Here's Suicide Squad. Yeah. Now what do you want? Suicide. <laughs> I I gotta tell you, man, that movie. Okay, let, let's, did you go beginning to end? Did I did. Yeah, I, fi- I finished the whole thing. Oh. So a- everything in that there was a video. I think we talked about it right after uh, you roughly, saw it. Roughly, yeah. He had some good points too. It's worth. I'm, I'm. I know this movie is not going to be great. I know it's not even going to probably. I'm not even going to err on the side that it'll be good. I was hoping that I could say, all right. I see characters I recognize. There are aspects of them I recognize, and they're fun and it's cool. Out of which is how I went into it because I was like, I've pre- we've all heard how bad it was, but I was like, maybe you know, I've I've seen some comic book movies that everybody hates, but I'm okay with. And you, yeah, and, and in this movie, there are three characters that actually worked for me. If the script doesn't suck, which it it totally does, 
and 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 uh, I think I can see. I I I, what, what I had a, characters. I'm, I, I had a hard time oh, with this one. Oh, you're going there. Okay. I, I I I but I can see Will Smith really pulling off Floyd Lawton. I could totally see him doing Deadshot. I think Will Smith has everything that he needs to have for it. We never really get to see him be kind of cold blooded. We never get to really see him be. Um, he says pretty cold blooded things, but you're right. He does. You never. We never get to see. You it. don't see him kill a dog or anything. No, no, no. And, and I actually, I don't think you'd see him kill a dog in, in the comics either, unless it was a requirement. But my I point agree is, with you that you have to work to make Will Smith not attractive in so many ways. But mm, true. I mean, even the movies of his, I'm not crazy about. Like, I'm fine watching he's him good. for a while. He yeah, is, yeah, he he's... is very rarely the problem in a movie. Yeah. You know, I, I think Will Smith's bigger issues is that he just, I don't think he chooses movies very well. I, I honestly think that's Lately. the problem. Yeah. Uh, there are a bunch of choices in the past, too, that I probably, but. Well, he's one of those that was like super A-list. And then you feel like, especially with this movie, I feel like he was kind of trying to reinvent himself because he's been pretty clean. He's been like, he, he's the. Well, the Men in Black stuff, you know. You, 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 Cary Grant of our time. A little bit, actually, yeah. To- I totally could see reference. that. Well, it's... no, because Cary Grant wouldn't do any movies where he was essentially the bad guy. Right, right, right. Like, no. No, that's like. But yeah, this, I mean. I guess in that way, this kind of worked. Like Will Smith is pretty bad. Yeah, he is now, pretty. Yeah, okay. He there he's. I, I I actually dig some of the stuff like he says. Some of the some of the bits. I like that he got his costume. You know, I like that that we did get to see him with the stupid mask on, which was something that you know you see it in the preview, and it's not throughout the he, whole movie. But he is the best part of that movie for sure. I think, um, yeah. The other character that surprisingly worked for me, not necessarily because he was a real direct counter to his to like counterpart to his comic book character but the ridiculousness of the comic book character and then the way they did it here I actually really liked I'm not gonna I, say who you think I am Captain Boomerang man I actually Jeez. he's only in the movie <laughs> for like a couple of little bits and the downside to Captain Boomerang outside of everything is that they don't they they, they give him nothing to do he still makes something out of it. And that guy, Jai Courtney, sucks like in everything. And he was yeah. actually good here. Like he's he's entertaining. Actually, yeah, you know what? Actually, no, yeah, we, we talked about this. We're like, why, how does it make kind of some sense that, that Jai Courtney, like this is his, not only is he maybe the, one of the standouts in this movie, but he's it's like he's in his element. It you is. And, and, and the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, bad is is good for him, but I feel like if you gave him a good a, that keep that same style of that character, I think he'd probably be real strong in that role. He um, does a good kind of grungy jerk, like yeah, just... the grungy Australian. And like the, the one of the the hard things about Captain Boomerang, I, <laughs> Captain Boomerang in the comics, kind of racist. Oh, is he really? Yeah, not like, Wait, his portrayal or his character. Early on, he's he was a pretty racist character like he, he occasionally dropped some racial epithets that were were kind of I, ah. I if i remember correctly they were they were aimed at the, the aboriginals the aborigines i should say because he's australian in the comics sure. too um the maoris or whatever no, yeah but he, he well zealand. no that's new zealand um but the the, the aborigines <laughs> now who's racist the, yeah the <laughs> aborigines from uh, for, that are in australia and I, okay. I straight up don't know but yep. um so they clearly left that out they, they kept a bunch of the the stuff in the ha- that he has the the boomerangs and, the, and all that and he's got some really good quips he has one of the weirdest like intro things where he really likes this pink unicorn that he keeps in his jacket that never really comes up other than it's there and then at no point are they robbing banks or doing anything where they're taking money. He gets stabbed, and then suddenly he pulls a wad of money that saved him from being killed yeah. out of his and jacket. The, that's a point that was in that video that was it, made that it, I completely missed amongst all the other confusion. But yeah, it's almost like... Th- that's why that video is actually pretty good, is because a lot of the questions... And I didn't know this, but I guess the movie was eventually finished or something by a trailer house. Yeah, like yeah. A, a, a company known for cutting trailers and not movies and it makes perfect sense but also yeah that that editing mistake where it seems like they're setting you up for something that has no payoff or has a completely different payoff it's just it's bizarre you, like you get nothing and the, the only thing i ever was able to think about that was that maybe the money was supposed to be in the unicorn but it I doesn't matter think so hard about and it and then the, the last person that actually was stood out and she it was was spot on for me was uh, was amanda waller 
It, she killed it. Like she was great. Viola Davis. It, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Viola okay. Davis. Yeah, right. she was fantastic. Like she, she hit the waller. Like especially for for some of the 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 more she, current books. She was great. Yeah. No, she's a massive. Maybe the massive talent of that movie. I think she's she's a serious actress. Like. And yeah, for sure. <laughs> everything I say about this movie sounds like a backhanded compliment at best. Because it is. No, it's <laughs> like there's the only thing's good about the the movie. The movie itself, like it, the the movie falls apart under its lack of structure. It falls apart because the plot is completely you're given one plot, but then there's a, like a divergence to the plot that doesn't really matter. None of it actually makes sense. Like it, it in the in the grand scheme of the story. Do you like how the main thing is like the enchantress, like boring a hole in the middle of the city right. that's like two miles wide that they don't address until the, for yeah. like a full hour. They don't. They just let it go. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> like it's not a it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Oh. Yeah, that movie is a mess, man. It's. Um, it's Everything and more. And that movie bummed me out. So I decided to uh, uh, start um, Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl. Oh. Uh, oh, no kidding. You went for Supergirl. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I, I sh- I've never... I never... I, <laughs> I don't like no, Superman. No affinity for the character. Yeah, yeah. No. I, I don't like Superman all, at all. Like the the best Superman I've seen actually in years has has probably been the Injustice Superman because it's kind of an interesting take on him. So Supergirl, I don't have any references for really. I, I know the very like the the most minute minute information. Yeah, I know she used to cousin. I know that that she has essentially the same powers, but never really learned and how it's to use them. Changed and, twenty. Like in fact, if I remember. Oh, we're gonna watch a video. The Polygon actually has a pretty cool series called uh, "Issue at Hand," I think, or mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, it's got a I forget the girl's name, but she does a good job of of putting stuff together. But they talk about her, I think, during some of the crisis stuff or something. Because DC's rebooted all like they're rebooting right now. Like probably, I don't know. No, they are, and actually, the new yeah, okay, the new reboot go. the new reboot is fantastic. They're they're doing oh, everything sure. right. No, it is. <laughs> it, give it a couple months. Yeah, no, it will it will fall apart. Well, no, then they'll reboot again. That's in a couple months. Because whatever. it'll fall apart. <laughs> Apparently, but Supergirl's one of the ones that's like, gets like left out and then brought back in because she's like, so I, I don't know, but yeah, Supergirl. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I, both of those shows, I'm uh, I'm about three episodes in on. Uh, I, I kind of went back and forth. Both of them, the exact same issues in episode one. Terrible freaking pilots, man. They were bad. <laughs> Oh, speaking of Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl. Yes, because I'm also I'm also yes, and watching Legends gotcha. of Tomorrow. I'm gonna get because they're like three seasons in or something now, or two seasons in, I guess. I wanna see how this works out. So I'm gonna give it another couple of episodes. And thankfully, both shows, the second episode leaps and bounds, I think, above the 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 pilots. Um, Which one did you like better between the two? Legends or, of Tomorrow for sure. Really? Yeah, I, I think it's a better show. Really? They're not shying away from the fact that that they're kind of bad guys and that in that they're bad guys, they do bad things. And I'm not talking about killing and stuff. I'm talking about just basic life. Like yeah, one of the things like they cut in line. They, yes, they're like, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but one of the things that that like and I don't remember, I, I haven't seen a network show do this. They actually show a lit joint. And they talk about the fact that he's smoking pot. They don't call it wacky tobacco. They flat out say he's a pothead. They flat out say that uh, when Black Canary, at one point, hmm. she like they show her grabbing a whole bunch of joints. And then she goes to fight a bunch of guys. And they're like, <laughs> should you be doing this? You're pretty stoned. And she's like, I could do this on anything. And then she goes and fights. And when you say grabbing a whole bunch of joints, is that is that how like, she's smoking it? Or is she just eating them by the handful? There, she or grabs what? a handful of joints that he'd rolled oh, and, and okay. runs off. And and the okay. person that she grabs <laughs> like, is that the joints, how she's doing the drugs. I don't think. Yeah, this she, is, yeah, I don't she know grabs them and then crushes understand. them up and then rubs them into her face. <laughs> yes. And she's like, "I'm so high." Uh, the guy she's going back to see in that second episode also is the, uh, uh, it's the younger version of the doctor that's part of Firestorm. Is that where he went? Because he's not in Flash anymore. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which is all I know of Legends of Tomorrow is when they've showed up, and I think there's been a crossover episode with. There is definitely a crossover. Flash I, that I just completely skipped all together i i don't know if i've i don't know if i'll get over that hump like that's I, I it seems to be bonkers 
And that's kind of mm -hmm. cool in a way. Is that panning out in the yeah, show? Yeah, it, it's it's kind of the whole thing is them fighting Vandal Savage. And it's basically time hopping year to year where we're going to find him. We're going to get him. Oh, he outsmarted us again. Dag nabbit. But you said it's not better than Flash. It's definitely not least. better than the Flash. No, okay. it's better than so, Arrow. Yeah, I don't, I don't um, know if I can. Oh, better than Arrow. Okay. So yeah, especially mm -hmm. the later the, after season three of Arrow. Definitely better than that. Which I'm stalled at season two. Yeah. It, it, season if you want to come back sometime and do a, a Supergirl, that could be cool. Like I'm actually way up to date on that because yeah, yeah. my daughter loves it. Like I, we've been through it. And, and they made, they got bought by CW. Right at one point and like that show drastically changed for the better N not necessarily okay <laughs> but uh but yeah still watching so yeah we, we could probably come back to so that. far my favorite part about about supergirl is uh the guy <clears throat> playing uh james olsen not jimmy yep the least He's an adult the least interesting part of supergirl the part that's already grating on me three episodes in is callista flockhart that's a character that doesn't need to be there. She is a very, very poorly yeah. written version of J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Or Ver Perry. You know, like th see, that's that I, was see, the weird thing. I don't no? think she I don't think she's close to Perry. Perry because Perry and Jay and, and, and Jameson were never like a like they, they were I just, similar. I just roles. mean structurally, like it's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Structurally, exactly. But but And that's kind of a theme with that show is how closely it is kind of just a Superman show. Sure. But they also which is part of the reason I was cool with my daughter watching this is because I think they actually do pretty cool stuff with a female lead and kind of letting that go on its own rather than like the whole, I think they got bought after the first season, the yeah. whole first season, no Superman. Like they, he's they, a shadow maybe once or twice or something like that. They constantly bring him up and like, but, but they, they do, they actually, you're right. It's a little heavy. And I get the feeling that somebody was putting that pressure on there. But they draw the line at bringing him in, and they actually address that too, which I thought was smart. Because yeah, the whole time you're you're kind of thinking like, why don't why aren't we seeing team ups or why doesn't you know if he did show up often, it would you know start to draw this question about is he just bailing her out all the time? Which right. yeah, it, it changes like it, it gets bought, and then literally the first episode after it gets bought, Superman. And he's a bad Superman, so. Yeah, I've heard. I've seen pictures of the guy, too. And he doesn't look like. And no. that, that's the thing. Superman is one of those characters where there's a look to him. He just has to have a look. That's like fi over 50% of him, maybe, you would His say. His Taylor Hoechlin, <laughs> I think, right? Something like that. I, I could not tell you he, if I tried. He doesn't. Whatever. We've already Supergirled too much. Yeah. Did you have. That's it. Okay. I'm done. What's the best movie ever made? Shaolin Soccer. Okay. <laughs> have you watched Shaolin Soccer? I, I, yeah, of course I have. It's a, so brilliant. I don't know. I forgot. I think I only watched it shortly after it came out, uh, and I couldn't find a. I, all I could find was a dubbed version again. But that thing is just the best. <laughs> <laughs> it I, is, it's amazing. Like it's better than I even remembered. Really, Stephen Chow, that guy. Like he, he is. He has such a knack for doing what Jackie Chan can do, you know, that, 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 that he brings a fantastic, like a, a, a kinetic movement to his, his stings, his, his fight scenes are great, but totally. he's really funny and he's really good at playing the out down on, down on his luck, total loser that shouldn't be any, but is, but, and is just like happy. Like, it, yeah, and I think the best way I've ever heard Jackie Chan himself explain it, which this will get us to Stephen Chow is um have you seen that interview where he's talking about how he looked at all of bruce lee's stuff and we're at the end of like a sequence bruce lee would kind of do that pose and go nah, or whatever yeah like, you know like curly from the three stooges mm -hmm. I can't. Um, nah. he jackie chan would instead like shake his fist and do his face like ow or something like that yeah. and that's the essentialist difference between the two right that explains both of them especially jackie chan to a t so stephen chow is what if like instead of like shaking his hand and saying ow like his hand swelled up really big and you know bugs bunny not bugs bunny like ran off into the distance or something like that he's looney tunes <laughs> totally no <laughs> he, he he's he he is he is excellent at making the cartoon yeah and that shaolin soccer is freaking that like it's it's, it's wacky so like in all the right ways like that that 
I was concerned at one point because there's a like a, a dance number that's kind of <laughs> wacky that breaks out out of nowhere, and it's in the movie. Like it's not it's not like everybody starts dancing and everybody else in the movie is kind of like oh you know ignores it for the most part so yeah. it can happen. They start doing it, and then the song is celebration. <laughs> and, and for a second, I was like, I wonder if this is the original song or if this was like part of the dub. And then I realized it didn't matter because it was the perfect one. Like it's still like I almost think it was probably the same one in the in the Chinese version. Probably. But but then every in the in the movie is like stop dancing. What are you guys doing, you weirdos? You know. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's if the, if it had a genre, it would be like Chinese magical realism or something like that. Because there's always they, they shift back and forth between the stuff that Stephen Chow's talking about when he goes into his thing about how kung fu is in and throughout all and the source of all martial arts and stuff like that and the guy he's talking to like gets in this monk like get up while he's doing stuff and then it'll cut back to the real world uh, you know and, and he'd be wearing some of that stuff and then take it off as the discussion goes on just really brilliant stuff yeah if if a little herky jerky like the direction isn't perfect but does not matter in the least now have you seen kung fu hustle that's the next movie i saw Segway boy. Because that 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 is <laughs> I, I like Stephen Chow's movies, but Kung Fu Hustle is far and away the best one for me. Okay. I We're gonna go in opposite directions. Just then. cannot get enough of that flick, man. That the old lady who just is super pissed off and always smoking, she is like tops. Like <laughs> So I had never seen Kung Fu Hustle before, and I assumed and I, I try not to <laughs> figure this into too much of my opinion of it. I thought it was like the the, the hustle, the dance from the seventies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which sounds amazing. It's it, but it's I, hustle like like a scam. Like the dude, <laughs> right? Like I feel like he should have made that movie. I feel like he still can and should. He really should. Kung Fu Hustle too. Like this is it's this just is about real it. Hustle it takes place in the seventies. It's just a disco disco kung fu. But but yeah, I mean, I'm gonna go. I liked Kung Fu Hustle. But I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I like Shaolin Soccer better. Kung Fu Hustle, for me, the first act is way slow. Sure. And, right. okay, slower than Shaolin Soccer again. It, it, there's still very much interesting things going on. And, and there are actual da dance numbers. So there is dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, It's not the hustle. Or it might be. I don't it's know. It's not. It's not. Okay. But it kind of starts and this still goes throughout where it, it's it's a more polished version of a Stephen Chow movie for absolute sure mm -hmm. like it, it's it's a better made movie it's a better I mean speaking of the direction and or the editing in Shaolin Soccer it's a better directed edited movie than Shaolin Soccer yes it's almost too much like he's there's there's two <laughs> storylines in that movie one of them is the 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 town with all the the martial arts the the kung fu masters that are kind of in hiding and they're all they're all brilliant like they're all the, the Stephen Chow's thing is is these kind of unsung like kind of weird like ho-hum kung fu masters like the the dry cleaner that you know has his the rings he, he takes all the the dry cleaning rings from his curtains down and they're his like fists of power yeah. and <laughs> One of them is more, a little bit more traditional, but he's kind of just a, a down and outer in the town. And, but then the two main ones that are even better are like this fighting couple that are, they're just super normal, like balding, you know, which he did in, in Shaolin Soccer as mm -hmm. well. Super cool. I wish the whole story was that. <laughs> the other but... part of the story is Stephen Chow's character, which he, he does perform in the hustle. He tries to pretend like he's a member of the Axe Gang. And then there's this whole thing about he's actually the beast. Like he's a secret Kung Fu master. He doesn't even know. And, and they, t they only touch on that once. Like he gets beat up and then he he comes back without any things. And his buddy's like, how do you always come back without any things after or without any cuts afterwards? And he's like, I don't know. That's it. Literally it. That, that comes back at the end. I mean, sure. <laughs> but it doesn't. it's not tied back into the rest. Like and, no, and no, no, that... I, storyline bogs down way too much in his journey like because he wants to he's doing the hustle he's a rogue he wants to become a member of the axe gang but he has to kill somebody but he, he, does, he doesn't have the heart so in the end he kind of turns on the on a dime and turns against the the axe gang and then does all that but the, his whole story takes takes all there's no fantastic to it it's just literally like all these kind of well-worn things of this guy coming around and kind of character progression and all that which isn't it wasn't Stephen Chow's 
strong suit. When that was strong in Shaolin soccer, it's when it was wacky. Like this, the, his interactions with the girl are just like, uh, you can see, <laughs> you can see the bare bones of it. Like this is a love story. This is the steps that would happen, but it's, it's you, it's underneath everything else where you're like, yeah, I mean, this is structurally what it should be doing, but it's not so. Right, and, right. And that's take away all the nuts from the from the Kung Fu Hustle Stephen Chow storyline and it's kind of not it's not it's not what he's good at, man. The whole time I was like, No, do what you were doing. Like this is everybody <laughs> else does this, man. Go back, do do your thing what you were doing. Uh, but it's still still fun. I don't want to rag on Kung Fu Hustle. Too no, much. you rag on it. I, I would say now I would say though, your your follow up film should be uh um Kung Pao. <laughs> have you have you i do need to watch that again you're not wrong yeah no um no actually i already have my follow-up queued up it's cj7 which was the next one that stephen chow did did mm. you ever see that no that uh, he's he's yeah. got a he actually has like 60 movies or something like he's got a pretty big uh filmography no. i've never dug through all of it yeah well, he's been in stuff i but i've never dug through all of his stuff oh I, I didn't okay yeah I didn't look at the stuff he's been in I was just looking at stuff he was kind of in charge of yeah it's yeah, not yeah I haven't terribly s- long there's definitely a lot more in China that kind of didn't cross over I mean these are Chinese movies but right which is why many of them I've never seen okay doesn't matter games. hey that was the first podcast this is the next one <laughs> yeah. did you play any video games this past week or was it all just Legends of Tomorrow it was just Suicide Squad over yeah, and over was, my was head was it all Suicide yeah. or yeah I, uh, I've been playing uh, Breath of the Wild still uh, okay, I've been bouncing around between my my uh, my TV and and taking the the switch around my house. It's, I which I still I love it. I love that I can just take my switch everywhere and the game looks great, plays great. Um, I I found w- one of the things that I found is is uh, we I talked about this last week that one of my issues was kind of that open world thing, and, and that that there are some difficulties and and lack of direction and. I, I still maintain that that the the blatant lack of direction is is probably rough for newcomers to the series. So I'm I'm very interested to see where Beth goes with this because getting to where I'm at, I don't know that she'll stick with that. Has she played again since the first time? I think so. I don't remember. All right. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know. I should say not remember. This week, I I I, I kind of just got annoyed with with sticking into this one little area where I was certain this is where things were. And I just decided to start going out into the world. And I'm finding that that is definitely the way to go. You'll kind of find where you can't go and where you, where you can. And nothing really tells you what to do. You get a list of quests. They're all kind of generally in the same area, but some of them, you just have to, to, to further them to, to get that, items you need to make it easier what have you you just have to go out into the world you flat that's it it's it's not it's it's literally not telling you what to do at all you know it's it's here are some quests go take care of them these are the, the four things you have to do figure out how to do it so are you still bumping up against this or i'm running into issues still with some of the combat and 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 part of it is is timing i'm just having to learn the timing uh, but the open nature like the Lur- the thing that you think might be rough on new players are you yourself it, still you know it, and that's what that's i guess that's where i'm getting at is it it's Go kind on. of starting to click for me a little bit um it, instead of kind of following the path i was going on now i've decided screw it i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna go into the forest and i'm gonna check that out and ended up going up to zora's domain and, and i'm finding that they're slowly building the difficulty in that but it doesn't tell you that. Does it put a marker on your map? No. Like, is it telling you where to go? No. At least? No. No, you get huh. nothing. You are given nothing. Man, every time I hear you talk about this, though, it makes me think of, and it's not the only time I've heard people make this comparison, so whatever, but it, it reminds me of, like, the first Legend of Zelda. May, maybe Link to the Past. I've played that more recently and still can't remember if it puts markers on your map. I, I think f- it does. It definitely puts markers on your map. But the way those games just never the first game never never told you anything never told you anything that's this one it, it is it is harkening back to that figure it out so you're not necessarily loving it no i love it that, i am still aspect. loving this game oh. i think it is a fantastic game. no but that aspect i think that aspect could have used some work i okay. don't <laughs> now that i've played longer and i've got more time under my belt i don't hate it as much as i did at the beginning gotcha. but 
I can easily see how that is a barrier that will stop people from really enjoying a fantastic game. And and to be fair, I think this is probably the toughest Zelda game that I've played next to Mate. I, I haven't gotten far enough. Majora's Mask was difficult, but on a different for different reasons. I never finished Majora's this Mask. Is, yeah. This is this is Majora's Mask is difficult because it's it, it's structurally weird. Too yeah. For, yeah, and I'm kind of. 50 50 on the 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 whole weapon thing the way it works in this game i don't know how much i like that or not i'm not a huge fan of games where <laughs> where weapons take damage and they break and you have to keep replacing them over sure. and over again no, i don't disagree like it's one of the reasons i haven't played dead island to this day and and that that was one of those things that killed that game for me too it was it's boring it's annoying it's frustrating I get that, like, I, I understand the, the, the conceit of it, and I see why a yeah, developer no, might, yeah. might choose to do it. It is an option and a function I don't like for the most part. It's one of those things where, I mean, games are in a weird spot because they are kind of, they're, they're, they're in the kung fu hustle phase of Stephen Chow's movie making career, <laughs> where they're, they are smoothing out a lot of these edges because these are very much, you know, as stories become bigger, and this is why it's, a big thing to me is because I very much focus on that type of thing. Right. But the, the game elements take a backseat a lot of the times, you know, like the, the very strict, like balancing and game design aspects. Like some of those are just kind of falling out of favor. Like we, we get it. Like this is, this is the, the push and pull is becoming less interesting. Yeah. Kind of. No, I, and I, I agree with you. I mean, it, it's, I, and one of the, one of the shortcomings that, that happens with this particular mechanic, there's nothing that shows you a deterioration. You just, you hit things with it and then it suddenly starts flashing red. You get a notification. Your thing is damaged. So legend of Zelda down to seven out of 10 stars. Yeah, keep, it did. It did raise track. stars when I found out you could shield surf. That's fun. And every time I do it, all I think of is uh, is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. You can go up onto hills, and as long as you've got a shield, you can jump, and then you'll you'll jump onto the shield, and you'll surf, and you go down. Dude, that's <laughs> so extreme. It, you'll enjoy the new Fast and Furious movie. I that's might not. one of not. the good moments in there. So that's Breath of the Wild for you. Uh, there's more coming, I, I, I'm sure. I, I don't know how much more I'll talk about it unless new interesting mechanics roll out. Uh, hey. And then... Cool. Uh, um, I also picked up Prey, which uh, fantastic. Uh, just we tri- spoke very quickly about that last week. I don't know. I spent two hours with it last week. That was my. I, I looked at my my game time played. Okay. I spent another two hours with it this week, just because it's it's what I had. And and I can legitimately tell you, I have only gotten one room further <laughs> because I started roaming around and and. This that's totally a game where you have to look for everything everywhere. You've, oh, so it wasn't enemy difficulty. It was more of a no. Last week was enemy difficulty because I was getting used to it. Now I now that I have guns and stuff and I've gotten some more weapons and I'm I'm starting to get used to the flow. The, the enemies are still terrifying and still <laughs> more difficult than I'm expecting in many cases. These uh... flaming phantom guys are awful. Uh, but the uh, yeah. I, I, I had to go around and search for things. Uh, I didn't have to. I chose to because I wanted to see what was there. There's <laughs> no, all sorts of. To. No, you did. I did. You uh, all sorts of weird emails and 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 information floating around. And there's tons of stuff where they're laying seeds. Like, oh, so and so did this, and it's just like an off. It, it's totally like a one-off written thing in an email somewhere. But then you'll go and you'll you know certain terminals. You'll have a, like a list of of employees, and they'll have whether or not they're alive or dead or what the deal is. And you'll see a name that was in that email and go, Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So that email said this person has something on their body or like it has a key card or whatever. And they're listed here. So you go through this list, you find the person's name, you click on them and then it'll give you a, um, a, a thing, a, a marker telling you where they are. Oh, nice. So you can go search for, it. that doesn't mean you can get to them right away. It just means they'll tell you in general where they are. That's still a really cool way to surface or, or do something with that stuff. Like thinking about games like Deus Ex or something like that, where mm-hmm. you're reading tons of emails and they're kind of cool and stuff like that. I've never heard of a game actually like a little bit of payoff with it. Yeah. Yeah. Interfacing with it again. That's cool. Super great, man. It, it's really strong. The, the, the storyline so far is, is pretty, pretty novel. It's pretty cool. It's, it's uh, sticking with the, that, the Morgan U character following through, figuring out, 
what's going on with Talos and all that. And and again, I can't really talk too much about it because sure. of that thing that I mentioned last week. There's a there's a a, a, um, a turn at the very beginning that sets the game yeah. up, and I just don't want to. Yeah, no, don't. It's. I mean, I'm gonna play it. You, just, you will. It's really good. I'm just gonna get upset about wanting to for a little bit yeah, while you will. and then finally cave. So yeah, it's all right. Uh, and then you and I both played uh, um, Tiny Racers, the GTA Five Tiny Racers. Yeah, we did that for the stream, which is already up. So I don't even have to pretend like it's going to be up. Yeah, I know. That's sounds time wrong. This goes. On. <laughs> what can I say? Don't worry, I'll log in and delete it. <laughs> It's a good mode. It's pretty good, yeah. Uh, b- Sean and I um, uh, actually had a discussion about this. Uh, I-, I think both of our... So, so, Sean Armstrong, yes, Slip a.k.a. Tide, Slip Tide, who does was, the music for the show. And who played, uh, uh, who was on the stream with us. He's uh, kind of an emotional anchor. Yeah. yeah zero hit points, if you think about it. He's more of a dead weight. But... <laughs> No, anchor right. That's exactly what that is. My bad. Um, Dragging us down. Yeah. The uh, so, so the, the 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 basic thing with tiny racers is it's all top down. There are uh, a number of of like little power ups you can get, machine guns and bombs and stuff. Uh, but the uh, whoa, 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 let's not go too fast. Past that, or you're going. I'm, yeah, I'm not done yet. Oh, okay. And then th- this this is these are all on very kind of small tracks that that you there is no ending to the race it's a last person wins. So it's not, you're not racing to an end. You're last racing to standing. survive. Yeah. Last yeah. man standing. And, uh, what we found was, was the game mode generally lasts about 40 seconds at most. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was gonna say the power ups don't skip over. There's one that turns your car into a ramp and so you yes. literally just shove somebody from behind and they kind of flies them off the screen. A little, not that bad, but and, and of course a bomb, a machine gun. What was and, the other one? The, the, that, the, oh, the it one, turns you into the Tron light cycle. Yep. <laughs> Which, <laughs> which is, which is just total rip chaos off. for everybody. Yeah, I know it's OP. And then, like anytime I got that, I was just like swerve, swerve, and, yeah, then and you win. First uh, place. And then the the other thing um, that that uh, that can cause you to lose is if the person in first place gets too far, you have to stay within a certain distance of them. Yeah, yeah. So, I the one issue that Sean and I both kind of agreed on was outside of. All of the things I just mentioned, the one downside to the mode is that it's got the Grand Theft Auto car issue. And this is the mode where they needed to not do that. And and, sure. the, and it it's sucks. It's done in the Grand Theft Auto engine where like that. The minute you touch somebody's tail at the beginning, they swerve and they're they're done. So yeah. there was a little but bit they also sometimes at the expense of your own life. So there's oh, a risk reward there. No, like, mostly mostly reward. Uh, yeah. but <laughs> Yeah, that's the one downside. But but for for how quick this this mode is and how how just real simple and silly it is, if you've got a group of people to play with, for sure, this is totally yeah. a mode that I would never ever play with randos. Ever. No, no. I mean, it's it's uh, talking about the controls. It's it's kind of the GTA thing. Mm-hmm. Like even light bikes and kind of all these add-on modes. Like yeah. they're fun in spite of stuff like that you know like they they get what's important and that makes it fun with friends uh but yeah i mean on their own like if if it were just a light cycle game or just this tiny racers game even if it was standalone you would be like well this is stupid yeah for sure (laughs) but the fact that it's like a free little add-on thing is cool yeah no it's it it was definitely worth playing and we'll probably do it again and then uh um no i think you played this a little as well uh the injustice mobile app yeah Injustice Two, <laughs> Matt. Uh, come on. N- no. No. Okay, you went back and played the first. I'm still just <laughs> okay. the first. <laughs> All right. How far did you get? What did you do in the Injustice Two? It sounds like you've done a lot more than I have. I've actually. done the entire story up until you can get to Shattered Alliances Part Two. I think so. It's yeah. Like five Chapter or six. One is all they give you, which I assume they're waiting until the game comes out. Maybe. Well, a game and game dropped yesterday, so I'm sh- I'm guessing it'll be within the week. They'll probably update it. Okay. I hope so because I'm all about that. <laughs> yeah i have not actually watched any of the so the story mode actually does give you the story i've been tapping through it like as soon as oh what like because I you want it on the console because i want it on the console oh, okay. i don't care about it on the mobile. Right, i'm a happy man like this i mean i still feel conflicted about this but i'm not gonna buy the game because this thing's in the app like, no, that's, that's what i want and it's it's i'm playing on my ipad so maybe that has something to do with it like it's not a, no like iphone i'd be unsatisfied no 
Okay. I know I still wouldn't do it even if I had it on my iPad, which I could. I just don't. I want it on the console. Okay, well, we can talk about that later, but it's <laughs> off to a really great <laughs> start. We can talk about start. your idiocy later. But no, no. I mean, we can you know, talk that, about the story. Like, Oh, I, yes, yes. I see. I thought you were just mocking your me. Your idiocy. My... We'll just never talk about that. Yeah. That's that's a sub. It's called subtext. <laughs> Uh, so I, I've done I've done all through the first chapter that uh, the challenges, uh, which are basically just running through you. You pick three characters and then you go and fight them. The the there are three characters and you you do like, I think it's uh, you do five normal fights and then you have like a boss fight, which is the harder the the harder oh, version the, of those three characters. The campaign. Yes, yeah, some that's yeah, the campaign, the, the, which was the thing I played for like an hour and went this isn't the story because i i still didn't believe at that point that they were going to put the whole story mode in the app i was like no there's no way that's got to be wrong somehow so i played the campaign because of course that would be the story mode because that's what everybody in the world calls a a, a the story (laughs) mode uh but yeah and then i was like man this is not it and then i just went to the menu and scrolled over one and it's like story and i was like that's probably the story and it was man you were you're the like story Benedict is fantastic Cumberbatch. so far, though. I'm. It's gonna be. I'm looking forward to talk about it. You're the Benedict Cumberbatch of this outfit. I love it. That, thank you. Because you're Sherlock Holmes, mixed with a little ah, bit of Stephen Strange. Yes. Uh, so you're Martin Freeman. Let's not. Let's not say anything we can't take back. He's kind I, of the better character. I don't. He does this a lot. I don't know that he does. No, he does actually in all of it. <laughs> go, look, go look at his. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to say what you did in at all. all. That, that, in that all was his, on camera. In all his, They're just going to have to imagine what you did. In all his off camera photos, whenever anybody takes like set photos, that's what he's doing always. Wow. That's, that's offensive. Um, yeah. How does he get his leg up around his. He's a hobbit. <laughs> he's a free Sorry. man. Please. He can do what he wants. So the, the campaign, not story mode thing. I went through the first uh, like bullet point of them, which is I can't even remember who I who all I fought, but there's I think four or five bosses, and then you go to the next one, and there's four or five bosses, and the next one you just keep going for like ten or so campaign levels, I guess. Are you having fun? Are you gonna keep going? I will keep going in as in so much as to find out what I need to do to get whatever unlockables actually get to the console version. After that, I don't care about the game. Yeah, I, w- I went far enough to... Because I unlocked Flash. It's very much like Mortal Kombat in that you're unlocking characters with cards, pretty much, essentially. They don't look like cards this time like they did last time. But um, I stuck with it long enough to see the x-rays again. I wish I knew what they were super called. Super moves, they, yeah. Super moves uh, for each character because that's the same between the console version, I believe. And... That was cool, but that's I, I've got four characters in, and then I didn't unlock any others. The, the character unlocking seems to be one of the things they kind of drip, so that you'll Super gated. spend some money. And I'm probably done. I don't think I'm interested in anything else. Yeah, in that game, it's it's the Mortal Kombat X app. It's the same tap fighting. It, it's not exactly the same, and it's, obviously, it looks very different. I think the Mortal Kombat X app looked better. I'm not a huge fan know. of this. I, I wasn't. No, it, uh, I wasn't a huge yeah. fan of the first mobile app either, though. So it's. It almost seems like was it this? Like the design seems weird. Even it's like they. It almost seems like they farmed it out. Like, this. I don't, this is definitely different from the first one. It, it's cluttered. That whole the whole like main page where you do everything is cluttered to hell to me. Like and just nothing goes together kind of right. Right. Like all yeah. The, yeah. It, it's yeah. not. It's not to me a very well put together mobile. It, it, it's. It's. Uh, like you said, the character unlock stuff is a drip where you have to kind of play through the game a bunch to get the gems to unlock unless you're going to pay. And or even get then, shards and to will, unlock when you get enough shards. Well, you can, you can unlock hero. There's hero chests you can unlock that only give you a hero. And it could be any hero. It could be gold. It could be silver. It could be nothing. No, I, I got shards out of those a couple times already. The actual hero chest because you yeah. can't get a shard out of the hero chest. The he- you, I'm pretty two sure chests. it gave me 10 are, Superman shards instead of a character. There are two chests you, that you can get. One that's an hourly or whatever. That can give you shards. It can give you XP. It can give you the shards. There's another chest that you pay with a s- uh, different currency. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's I, I, okay. purple. I will, I'll retract that because I, I can't remember exactly now. But I feel like I opened one of those hero chests with 150 gems and got 10 Superman shards out of it. 
instead of an actual character. But that may have been the first one. If you actually, you know, I I'm almost positive that's what it was because, because I've got I've opened like three of those chests and I've only got the Flash is my only other character. I've I never. Got the, it gives you ten shards for Catwoman. You can you can uh, yeah. redeem that I got, and then it, I got Wonder Woman out of the free hero chest it gave you, and then I've opened like three more hero chests besides that because it's got like uh, the other thing it has is like missions or objectives where you do this in a fight or do this five times or beat this person in a fight and you claim your reward and it gives you more gems. So I've opened like three more hero chests and I don't have any extra heroes besides those four. Dude, that's weird. Cause all I've done is open that and all I've gotten. So since this is how many times I've opened it, I got Deadshot, Scarecrow, uh, Wonder Woman, what the heck? Harley Quinn, <laughs> the Joker, Swamp Thing and Bane. You are kidding me! Seriously, that's all I've gotten out of the hero chest. Yeah, like I there, have so like four heroes. There are there are there's a the basic chest that you get like every it's every three hours. It's the basic chest and then the hero chest. Yeah, um, yeah, whatever. I'm not going back to it. It's so. <laughs> it even says contains one random hero with a rare chance of a gold hero. I don't know what happened to you, man. Somebody somebody did something wrong. Ah, that's weird. My Swamp Thing and my Deadshot are both gold, though, which is cool. So you I actually, got, Oh, you got gold ones, too. Yeah. yeah, I definitely didn't get any gold ones. And that's it, man. That's that's all for me. I have not played anything else. Uh, the only thing I played this week was I finished Wolfenstein, The Old Blood. I don't remember how much I said last week, but it was probably enough. Oh, oh I talked about how it seemed kind of empty at the beginning. That gets better. Uh, there, It's definitely kind of a slow start, but... Um, like th- there's because the original Wolfenstein, like people are coming in at you on your headset. It's kind of giving you flavor throughout the levels. Mm-hmm. There's a larger story that you're following. Um, it doesn't have any of the, none of the characters are as strong as the original game. Right. Like, I don't know if you remember Max, which yeah, yeah, I, she was she was she right. No, no. Uh, okay. Well, now I'm doubting their names, but Max, I think, was the soldier that like half of his head was missing. So he was kind of slow. Oh, right, right, and right. He had, okay. a, he had a guy that was keeping after him. Yeah. I don't remember. Like, I don't remember any of their names. So I think I forgot to mention them when I talked about playing the original game. Uh, but they are a fantastic, like, I love those guys. Max, especially like his, the, their whole arc was like just super fun and amazing. Like really cool part of that game. There's nothing that good here. And oftentimes you'll come into some characters. It's, it's abbreviated, like it's a smaller game, so whatever, but they kind of try to do a lot. Um, it does get better at the end when... So if you remember the marketing campaign for this thing, it was very Nazi exploitation. Uh, for Wolfenstein, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, for the old blood. I, don't, I, I legitimately don't remember the old blood having a different marketing campaign. But I, yeah, I, they, they had a trailer that I, was just... I remember the first one had like the, 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 the soccer, like the, the, the soccer thing, the guy gets a red card and the referee shoots him in the head. And I remember oh, I that, that where they did no, all the, I didn't see that. Oh yeah. They did this like whole huge alt right <laughs> style <Yeah>. history. <laughs> you were going to say alt history, but it worked it, and we're going to keep it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, uh, Old Blood had like this this cool trailer that was very Nazi exploitation, and it kind of it was real schlocky, and it had like the text that went up, you know, almost like a, oh like, yeah yeah like yeah the old horror Nazi yeah. movies, right? Yeah, I t- okay, now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. The game doesn't really approach as cool as that was, really, but it t- towards the end does introduce Nazi zombies, and at one point, like a zeppelin explodes from overhead, so you have Nazi zombies falling from the zeppelin onto the level, <laughs> like that's how they spawn in the level, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Um, and then it, later on, and you saw this level when we were doing a, a test for a project that we have coming up. But um, once you kill the normal guys, they'll just immediately turn into fire zombies after that. Um, they'll they'll like go down for a second and then poof, and they'll flame up and they're, they're Nazis. So they use that to cool effect at the end and it makes the gameplay even fun as well. Um, but that's like the last two chapters of, of that game. And I think it's an eight chapter game. And even then, the other characters they bring in, some of which die, they kind of bring in to die. Like, yeah, very abbreviated. Not doesn't pack the punch, but the gameplay is there. So, I mean, if that's what you love most about that game, it's still cool. Uh, and there's still kind of the overall aesthetic. Not not aesthetic, but the uh, I don't want to say milieu, but <laughs> the atmosphere. Uh, I hate myself. Say milieu. The, say it. Say it. <laughs> 
is is there like that part is there and it's very cool and it's nice i like i it. like <laughs> hey so lots of stuff happened this week let's talk about that <clears throat> bunch of game announcements tell me what you think about any of these so first off uh, uh proprietors of the popular website we love ubisoft.com proprietors um th- they had they got f- three and a half things to talk about far cry five five fast five furious <laughs> is this a lightning round what are we doing is it how do you feel but you played far cry 4 i for the most part i did yeah i did not because i played it. far cry 3 yeah none of us played far cry primal no but i did play blood dragon which was the best far cry of all that's, that's true we did you did go back and play that are you ready for a far cry after four you know a, a far cry that takes place in montana gee i don't know like far cry seems to do stuff like that like they get crazy story stuff going to make it interesting but it, is it enough when the gameplay is kind of the same and that's it's, where you're going to spend the lion's share like it's very samey yeah, yeah. So. i mean it's like the assassin's creed i think the ubisoft thing honestly it's that they make these humongous open world games it's true it wasn't just far cry and it just, was every ubisoft game for there's a lot of stuff to do in them and and we we mentioned this this was something we explicitly brought up with unity that unity God, that was too much that was like th- the worst offender too, too much, too much game. and yeah. and and that's not something i ever want to say like i don't ever want that to be a criticism i don't want to well, say you made too much of a game well far cry primal is kind of gives me hope because i feel like that was a departure in a lot of ways it was more but the fact that the gameplay was the same sorry story-wise because it's freaking well, Stone Age or whatever. Because it's of, more primal. Sure. <laughs> so a I, 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 little bit of hope that Far Cry 5, they're going to go even farther out on a ledge instead of... What am I talking about? They're, they're just... They're going to Montana. Like if anything, okay. they're they're reverting to the Far Cry-isms of you're a farmer now. Um, Look at my face, Ryan. This is the face of thrilling. That's the face of Montana, actually. Mm. It's pretty fairly close. I bet Sam Neill's not even going to be in it. Oh, well, okay. I guess we can go to the next one then. The Crew 2? But The Crew 2 is not for you. <laughs> Fair. Uh, the uh, the third one then they talked about was Assassin's Creed. Assassin's <laughs> Creed is not for me. <laughs> I, you know, I love that this one is going to have the Egyptian assassin, which That's is the, the coolest. Rumor, yeah. yeah, it's the coolest name. It's not going to be his name. His name is probably going to be like you know, Pharaoh Jeff, whatever. <laughs> uh, th- there, there are, there was, I hope so. <laughs> there was a huge, a huge um, supposed leak of information about this game. Now, th- there is again, there is some, yeah, there, there's some rumor that this is this is a more of a controlled leak and that they're trying to get people to know what's I'm coming. Kind of felt like that all along with this stuff in Assassin's Creed. I, I think after after feeling the heat from from Unity and then people just generally being kind of bogged down by this, I think that it, it makes a lot of sense. So so well, Syndicate came out after or Syndicate. Yeah, I'm sorry, Unity. Even okay. Yeah, that's what I meant. No, I mean you, Unity. You pro- are probably still right. People are still feeling the burn from that one. But there has been a game and then a, a dead year. And, and I think Syndicate was Syndicate was one of those things where it was, do we cancel it or do we just push it out? And then, no, then the, we, we take a year off wherein yeah. we actually release three Assassin's Creed games that were just old yeah. as remasters. So, <laughs> so all off. of that being said, that these are these are these are all just rumors. But but a couple of the rumors that that I, I think are interesting. No more towers. Towers are, are totally gone. Smart. Because you're going to have an eagle as a scouting mechanic that it sounds like you will inhabit the eagle and you can go a certain distance away from the Egyptian assassin and that'll tell you where things are. Um, and cool. that they need th- to change it up. So yeah, f- let's try some. That's cool. That's fine. They are they're bringing back the modern day thing so that the the animus is coming back. Okay, Th- these are all things that that are. That were things I know that that that, that they're, they're huge mechanic changes, especially the lack of of yeah. tower. That's a that's a for 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 Assassin's Creed. That's a huge mechanic change. Okay, okay. <laughs> because a mass majority of that first game for me was based on the idea that you could go climb up things, jump off, and swan dive into sure, sure. You know, hey. Yeah, okay. All of that. Hey. Along with <laughs> along with it, a year off and and more years than just one for you now. Is more Assassin's Creed something so you're ready for? You mentioned them going back to the kind of modern day stuff. I think 
that's a large part of where Assassin's Creed lost me, which I never thought about this, but I guess it corresponded with Patrice Desilate like getting booted for the most part. Like they killed Desmond. Uh, Lucy died too. I can't remember if that was before and after. They they basically like ditched that story. Like that I, I was they, they, that story has no ending. It all needs to be connected to the next thing, and they're still trying to give it ties in a way that just makes me entirely unconcerned about the whole thing. So they if they're going to do that story, they're going to give me something that they want to tell a complete story and not just keep me going for as long as they can. Then okay, step number one, cool. We're we're in. We're doing good. This is the other thing I thought about. If it being in Egypt, if they want to lean in hard to like Egyptian gods, I would be fully on board with that. Like if they want to give me like even go crazy fantastic for Assassin's Creed, even basically like, you know, Stargate. Yeah, give, yeah, totally. Give me a fight. Fifth element. Like give me a fight with the gods or something like that. Like with those that aesthetic and that design, like that would be cool. I yeah. could be into that as well. I could actually, the, you know, I think that would actually be kind of novel is, is to see Assassin's Creed move into something of, of that nature where, where the, you, you, they, they've already hit on the supernatural. They've already, you know, the whole apple of Eden thing. Why not let Horus or Ra or, or any of those gods and goddesses be things that are, right? are important, are, are actual, Real, uh, even or, or tied into the progenitor race somehow, which yeah, I it, guess that would be harder because they have a or, specific design already, but whatever. Yes. So I am not ready for Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, yeah, I think the two things I mentioned are a long shot. And even then I would have a hard, long, hard look at it. Like, yeah. Focus. Yeah. Um, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. There's a trailer or a teaser. A teaser. Little, little uh, Doctor Strange for you. Yeah, man. Little, that that little first game. Group. Easily the best Lego game for me. So okay, wait. Are you are you like day one counting the days on this no, thing? Or? Not okay, even close. I don't know. <laughs> Good news. I don't know that I will ever buy another Lego game. Fair. <laughs> I'm not I'm not ragging on them. I just don't know that I like. It's been a while. No, even I fell off a little bit here. Yeah, no. It's there are too many other games that are doing something really interesting, really unique, that aren't Lego games. You know. So one of those games, maybe, and I don't want to spend a ton of time on this, but Project Rap Rabbit. Yeah, okay. This is a Kickstarter that immediately was stupid uh, <laughs> off the bat. Kickstarter asking 1.1 million is their goal with a, a, a cool $4 million for a Switch version. <laughs> now, with e cool. even with the, the quality pedigree behind who's making this game, because the people making the game really do understand these games. It's a... It's, uh, um, the guys who made Just Elite Beat name. Agents and Parappa the Rapper, <laughs> and I will not say their names because I what, will not ruin their what, names. One of them made Parappa the Rapper, and then the other dude made Vid Ribbon, uh, Osu Takaka, Elite Kenden, Beat Agents, Guitaru Man, Elite Beat Agents. Yeah, so but, pedigree for sure. This has the pedigree. I still <laughs> don't think a million dollars for a rhythm game. That's it, no. I'm fine with the ask. I don't like care. That's, I don't care that they're asking for. I'm saying I don't want to donate to something that's asking a million no, dollars for no, that yeah, game. This, no. no, we won't. I mean, I've donated to one Kickstarter ever, but um, I just thought there's a trailer out for this thing. One million is an ask, and it, they have a hundred and seven thousand at this point, so they're not tearing up the charts by any means. Even though you know there's a month left on it, I feel like I was. <laughs> It seems promising, and the trailer, check it out, it it's actually looks pretty cool. I, I like the artwork, and sure. I like the ideas that they're talking about, but uh, that's maybe it for, for a while. Yeah, that's not a game that's going to get me. Uh, Legend of Zelda may come to smartphones, says the Wall Street Journal. Popular newspaper. Cool. Among Nintendo fans. <laughs> is it going to be is it going to be a Zelda run? Um, I, bet it, I bet it'll be I bet it'll be a match three. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo's got a good track record with their mobile game so far, I think. Like, if this is going to be a Mario. Zelda mobile game, I'm tentatively pretty excited. With zero information and the way my brain just just wonders aloud, I can't imagine this is going to be good <laughs> because I think about it being something real dumb and, and not fun, but I well, would okay, like to be so wrong. what? Do you Did you like Super Mario Run? I can't even remember at this Yeah, point. Super Mario Run's fine. Okay, but, I thought but, it was but, fantastic. But that none of us have tried Fire Emblem. Did the Animal Crossing one ever come out? I don't like Animal Crossing, so I would never play it. Fair. I think I I might be 
I might try it. Either way, I've... I'm not let's, saying... Let's discount Animal Crossing because we don't even know if that's out. I've heard good things about Fire Emblem yeah. in its distillation of that formula, much like Mario Run kind of sure. distilled that formula. It seems to me like a positive track record where, yeah, they're, 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 we're not looking probably at a full RPG Zelda here. No. But if they're going to distill that formula into something, I'm pretty excited about what that could be. Uh, yeah, it could be anything. I am just guessing it's going to be a match three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or it'll be like Frogger. Last but not least, <laughs> the producers of a new Thief movie say a new Thief game is coming. Because if you want anybody announcing your game... It's somebody making the movie tie-in. Well, that's not... No, wait. Is the movie the tie-in? What's, which one's that's the tie-in? A, maybe... What if they're not <laughs> related at all and they're just like only in title and like idea? That's... Uh, I don't, this, here's what I know about this. You don't make a movie not, not called a Thief without James Caan. And that movie was already <laughs> made by one, Michael anyways. Mann. So change your name or I'm going to sue you just like Bethesda sues people for using weird words. Yeah. I'd like to see James Caan sue somebody. That'd be pretty good. Shoot, yeah. He'd just shoot him. He would. And then Robert <laughs> Duvall would have to be his, uh, his, his lawyer. Okay. He, he, would, to, he would probably talk to them for a while. It would be real cool. I, then he would shoot him. I'm a big fan of James Caan. And that movie pretty is cool. amazing. It is. Yeah. The Last Thief didn't do great. It's no. not a great game. I didn't hear by anybody. This is this is one of those ones. They're gonna like, make a movie about like, that, and, and he and says, gonna, "Yeah, game two. And you know they're gonna screw it up because oh. even though it's the simplest, most straightforward narrative, that's ruin it. Well, for me, yeah, no. He th- he steals stuff. He's a thief. Um, he, tell you what, let's go the other direction. Then, what if Bioware unannounces some Mass Effect for a while? Oh. That's interesting because for the past six months, all I've heard about Mass Effect is about Mass Effect. So, and that's the main thing that kind of makes this all just dirty. Like, and we've talked about how tired we were of that marketing cycle, which half our fault because we covered some of it, but just how they pushed Mass Effect Andromeda so hard and it kind of landed with a thud. And yeah, they're going to put that franchise on hold for a while. (laughs) <laughs> this is is I, I I feel like I mentioned this. I feel like I brought this up. I feel like like we had the discussion about Mass Effect Andromeda um, prior to it being released. And one of the things we talked about was the writing um, and, and who was in charge of the studio and the fact that it's just not even close to the same team that was doing the first three games. And, and uh, I don't want to get down on them no, so no, much. No. I think it's important to distinguish because a lot of people worked hard on this and Definitely. did a lot of good work in many respects. I don't want to belittle that at all. No. It, it was just, it just put the dirty machine in relief to but, me, kind but, of. But yeah, and, and that's kind of like where, where I'm, what I'm, what I was trying to get to is I'm not ragging on the people that made this game. Andromeda is, is I'm sure it's a fine game in its own right. But they spent so much time building that game up and yeah. just puking out marketing after marketing saying, this is the, this is what you wanted. You wanted more mass effect. We got it here. It's coming. And then, which we, again, they probably didn't have a ton of control over even, I mean, but, but you know what? They made decisions and then the game kind of dropped, like you said, with a thud and man, that is, it makes perfect sense why they're putting it on hold. You know, I mean, they, they're they still patching the game. They just released a new patch that fixes some of the dialogue issues, makes dialogue cleaner. Yeah, it, uh, it fixes, fixes the game. It's fine now. Go fixes, check yeah, it out. fixes some of the, some of the uh, animation issues. Uh, it, so it's perfect. It's everything it wanted. It was <laughs> supposed to be. And you have nothing to complain about now. Um, part of what they did with that studio, though, is they sent some of them over to work on Battlefront 2. Mm-hmm. So that that's part of the the other part of that headline. I think some of this is coming from a source. So whatever was that they restructured the studio to be more of a support studio, and they actually sent some people over to work on Battlefront. But the quote coming out of that, no, sorry, not out of that, but out of Battlefront. Yeah, this was uh, all of this comes out of uh, an investor meeting, um, and CEO Andrew Wilson uh, is the one yammering. Which is, <laughs> I think, part of the problems we're running into is the whole aspect of taking news from investor calls and earnings reports like that's kind of problematic in that you're gonna get these things uh the, sorry the quote from battlefront 2 <laughs> here you go ready I'm star ready. wars battlefront 2 will have more than three times the content than the previous game at launch 
That's three times. Okay. The first game, 13 total maps, four planets, 11 weapons, oh, 10 wow, vehicles, you got it. and six heroes. So You're... three times all of that. What does it mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Smart. You read the whole article. That's, yeah. Uh, man. They, 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 they mentioned... <laughs> That that uh, uh part of the, the the content though is they are doing a single player campaign. There'll be a brand new story, we, which we've talked about. They've even shown in that that preview. We can see that that at least part of the story is going to be from the Empire's perspective. New modes, characters, new vehicles, planets from all eras of the Star Wars universe. Look at you above and beyond. I put that in there for the requisite joke. Yeah, three times zero is is. <laughs> Which is so Wait, funny because I was so zero. pissed about how much cr- not anything was in the game. <laughs> oh, man. We're what a, good at things. Hey, another Quake Champions trailer came out. Do you want to skip it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Square Enix, quote, to maximize player satisfaction as well as market potential going forward, they will regrettably withdraw from the business of IO Interactive. IO Interactive, the, the devs behind Hitman, had mm-hmm. a rough start with that first episode of Hitman and then picked up and critically and player-wise acclaimed game. Did very well. Well, did fairly well. I shouldn't say very well. It did well. It did well enough. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. What's going to happen to IO Hitman? Interactive, like what's going to happen to season two of the IO Interactive, Hitman game? IO Interactive will continue on. They will do season two. That was announced. It's coming. Oh, okay. They're going to continue as an independent studio for the time being. I have a hard time imagining... Um, them staying independent for that long if Square Enix had them for... for for I, I don't know how long that relationship was. If they owned IO for any length of time, knowing that Hitman did fairly well, I could easily see another decent-sized studio picking that that dev up. You would think they'd be fine, you know? I do think Let's they're hope fine. they're not one of those horror stories where they, they can't find work because they finished their work. You know, right. Well, like well, you hear all these stories about we released, we finally released the game, even if it did well. They're like, okay, your job's done. You did it. Yeah, and and, and like I said, we we do know it was confirmed. There will be a season two of Hitman. They are gonna. Um, I think the bigger question too, I saw people asking, is just does IO own Hitman? They do. Does that? Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. they own Hit- Hitman. Answer that IO, one too. Hey, Hitman is an IO interactive IP. Why, why, big questions. Why don't they just look them up on the internet, man? All the answers out there. Um, so Zenimax back in the news, remember when they tried to sue Oculus for things and then they won money and then John Carmack sued them back for money again. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) Here's, I can, I can, I can, I can distill this and tell you why it's going to fail. Zenimax Mm. is going after Samsung strictly for the phrasing, essentially, uh, powered by Oculus. And what, what the argument here is that... Well, no, they get, they're they more specific the, than the, just that. The, hold on. What they're no. saying, the claim here, is that because John Carmack brought in a fired employee from... Uh, I, I can't it, remember where he was from. It brought yeah, him... Owned by ZeniMax. Brought him into the office where they were doing work s- secretly about how Gear VR for Sam- Samsung's Gear VR would work and how it's going to go to market, all this stuff. Quote so, from Polygon here, that's yeah. where the two worked up a plan, according to the suit, to like for the basis of what a lot of it's, it feels like is still tied to that Oculus suit. It is. They're just being like, this is also fruits of that. So it is. It's and, just, and here, here okay, mm. here, here, here's, where, here's where this suit fails for them. And this is why this whole suit... Uh, it, 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 it's it's very similar to actually the the, the first thing. Um, they didn't win the whole suit against Zenimax. Didn't win the whole suit against Oculus. They won based on copyright infringement ostensibly and breaking an NDA. What they failed on and what they're arguing here, which they will fail again on, is stealing and using of trade secrets. Yeah. That is not going. They failed. It was. The judge outright said, they're "Not still even trying." It just I don't, even even just what are they doing, man? They're, what they're, is Zenimax doing? How how much more of this can they do? God, especially if you're growing up against John Carmack, who is unloved by maybe somebody he pissed off in high school. I don't know ex-wife if he has one. <laughs> Not, maybe, and she somebody's ex-wife. Yeah. I don't know. 
somebody's ex-wife of somebody who really liked John Carmack, she's probably not real impressed with John Carmack most of the time. Everybody else loves the guy. Zenimax just wants to kill everything. And how much longer? Where does it end? I don't know, man. Zenimax, Zenimax also, they, you know, they own Bethesda. And, and like, th- these two companies yeah. right now... I, you got to imagine somebody at Bethesda just like, come on, stop. I, stop y- you're... <laughs> All I uh, <laughs> you gotta I, you gotta think somebody at this podcast is like come on come hey, on tell you what else isn't ever gonna end the la, 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 lightning round because we're not gonna start it oh. so stay tuned next week when we the lightning round makes its triumph for return games are coming out if you were around yesterday you might have seen the Phantom Dust remake finally drop I guess for free, free. sounds like free to play in some way free. Uh, so check that out if you like it. There's also a trailer out there. If you don't know what Phantom Dust is, there's a trailer called What is Phantom Dust? Mm-hmm. I watched that. I'm still not entirely sure. Okay, fair. <laughs> I, did, I didn't watch it. And also, I'm still not entirely sure. Mm. Crazy. Very confusing. Today, the 17th, if you've been paying attention, Oceanhorn, Monster <laughs> of the Uncharted Seas is coming out. Oh, man. That's what they call you. The Oceanhorn. Ocean when, you're at, when, when you're out swimming in the Pacific. Yeah. There's the ocean. <laughs> Old ocean horn. Old ocean Added horn, yeah. Tomorrow, the 18th, you're going to find Thumper on the Nintendo Switch, which I didn't know was coming. It actually sounds like it could be a cool fit. Yeah, it's a sequel to Jumper, though, the Hayden Christensen movie, so not as good. Boy, is it? All right. Go on. Nope. <laughs> Friday the 19th, Shadow Warrior 2 is finally coming out, which I always get confused with Rogue Warrior, the, the Mickey Rourke vehicle. Sure. I get it confused <laughs> with Shadow Warrior 1. Oh. Have you played that? No. I feel like this is a big deal. It is. Okay. There you go. <laughs> the other Did game coming out on the 19th. Why don't you go ahead and read that, Matt? And then choose the real subtitle. <laughs> Fire Emblem colon Shadows of Valencia colon Visalian Nightmare colon The Whisper Rain Chronicles. I think the real subtitle is Shadow Warrior 2. Incorrect. It was Shadows of Valentia, or Valentia, depends on. I, don't know. I used to live in Valencia. I made up the other two. Yeah, Vi- what about Visalia? No. Okay. Tuesday the twenty third. Do you want to take that one too? <laughs> Utawe Rumono. What? Utawe Rumono. Utu- How did you do that? Utawe Rumono. Mask of Deception. You said it like it was second nature. I can read. Oh. It. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's ah, right. No, but... that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you, you have know, to. You, I mean, you just typed a bunch of letters there. I think. Okay, I got some work to do. It's cool. Some of which will be on zerohitpoints.com. Check it out. There. Check it out. Twitter.com slash zero hitpoints. Twitch.com. Like we said, the stream is up Dot on TV. the YouTubes where there's a channel. Mm-hmm. Check it out, kids. Yeah, we're it's gonna play more weird. games this week. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. PST. I think tomorrow is going to be Hot Wheels. I think we're doing it. Okay. I'm going to have to. I'm glad we actually didn't play that last week because I don't have my game. All right. Thanks for listening. Again, if you like movies and or video games and want to see them in two separate podcasts, drop us a line. Let us know. Please. That's all. Just like Phil Collins said, why does it always seem to be me looking at you, you looking at me? It's always the same. It's just a shame. That's all.